Yesterday on my main channel, which is youtube.com slash Timcast, my main segment talked about blue states losing residents at alarming numbers. We have a kind of update to this story, and I want to follow up with a bunch of different ideas as to why I think this is happening. The Daily Mail reports, high taxes are driving people out of New York. More people are leaving the state than any other, with nearly 1.4 million residents moving away since 2010. They say census data revealed state's population decreased for fourth consecutive year, just one of 10 states which has seen a decline in population between 2018 and 2019. It's not just New York City, though. Illinois is losing residents, and that's a huge, you know, blue state. Chicago, it's massive. And you also have California seeing a massive increase in what's called net domestic migration, meaning people who live in California are leaving California for other parts of the United States. While California did grow a little bit, I believe around 0.4 percent, I'm going to make a bold claim. I believe that it's fair to say failed liberal policies from these progressive bastions, you know, cities and states are driving people away from them. And this means Democrats will be ceding political power. Now, I know I did talk about this a bit on my uh, main channel the other day, but I'm going to it's, it's, it's an addendum. I, I got to talk about these issues, man, because a lot of people are saying it's high taxes. Let me just stop you right there. High taxes are a contributing factor. They are not the only factor. I believe there's I believe it's fair to say it is progressive laws. I know, I know. Now I'm going to be told by the left that I'm being biased. But I tell you this, man, my position is always has. Listen, there's a lot to go through. Minimum wage laws, Assembly Bill five in California. And I want to kind of break down a lot of the things I've said in the past in one segment talking about how these blue states will lose political power. And let's start with high taxes. Then I want to talk about these new laws and why I don't think it's necessarily taxes. It's the laws. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's several ways you can give. The best thing you can do, share this video because there's a lot of people who don't want to hear what I have to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. And you can help shatter some echo chamber bubbles, although most people don't care anyway. I mean, people who believe that jacking up the minimum wage is a good idea will always believe it, even though it's an archaic solution from 100 plus years ago that doesn't necessarily apply today. Ask Andrew Yang about that. And even though progressives in California are, are, are screeching about Assembly Bill 5, which has basically ended the gig economy for the most part, people don't want to change their minds. OK, so let me just let me just do this first. High taxes, major factor. California and New York have some of the highest taxes in the country. Most of the blue states where you, know, you're, where you see people leave, or I'm sorry, most of the highest tax states are blue, and most of the lowest tax, tax states are red. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So let's read a little bit from here, and I want to walk you through these points and explain to you, this will result, in my opinion, in Democrats and progressives losing a lot of political power for a variety of reasons. I don't want to rehash the population stuff. We can see this graph here where domestic migration has gone down. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, thousands of residents leaving. That's what it's showing. And that migration is, is, is lower than um, migration into the state is lower than migration out of the state. Like I said, California gained a little. Illinois, New York lost. They say New York has lost nearly 1.4 million residents to the, rest of the, uh, to the rest of the country since 2010. And largely as a result of this outflow, the Empire State's total population barely budged during the decade. According to the New York Post, Andrew Cuomo's office said that Trump and the GOP were responsible. He says these right wing cheerleaders failed to mention that it was the Washington Republicans asinine salt cap who raised taxes on New Yorkers at at this time, not the state. They say under Cuomo, middle class taxes were cut to historic lows. Business taxes were lowered. Manufacturing taxes were eliminated. Property tax were permanently capped. Unemployment was cut in half and a record number of private sector jobs were created. Let me just stop you right there. You want to take credit for unemployment? The whole country is seeing low unemployment. You can't blame Trump for your high taxes, okay? So let me tell you this. First, let's address the issue of taxes. California has the highest with 13.3 and New York with 8.82. We can see most of the highest tax uh, states, it includes DC, are blue states. And most of the lowest tax taxed are red states. Granted, you've got, uh, what do you got? What do you got in here? You got Washington in the lowest tax states. So, you know, that's a blue state. But then, you know, over on the other side, you do have some uh, red states with like Iowa, for, I believe Iowa's red, with some of the highest income taxes. But I'm going to focus on the big blues, the ones that are losing residents and the problem of taxes. First, New York City has its own income tax. Did you know this? So sure, New York might only be 8.8, but tack on the 3%, 3 to 4% about, I'm rounding up, forgive me for estimating, that you're going to pay when you live in the city with the highest population density. 
So it's no surprise people are leaving. We'll talk about population density in a second. So you add that in and what do you end up with? New York has basically the same tax rate as California, a little bit lower. Now you, so, so let's talk about taxes and I'll get into the bad laws hurting California and New York. I know, I know. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get, keep this all in a nice little neat package for you guys. First, increasing taxes does not guarantee an increase in tax revenue. I know I've told you, I told you all, uh, I told you all this story many, many times. I'm going to tell you again, because there's probably a lot of people who haven't seen this, this haven't heard me say it. I knew somebody who was a contractor. Okay. Back in, it was, this was in Cook County. Cook County raised their sales tax. There was a Home Depot. This, this could be like uh, apocryphal or just like an example. But what I was told was that Home Depot had shut down and moved a few miles away to reopen a new store in DuPage County. Okay. That's just to the west of Cook County. And I was talking to my friend's dad who was a contractor. And I said, why would they do that? Like that probably cost them like, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to, to create, like a, to shut down your building, build a new one a few miles away. And here's what he told me. Contractors do big orders. Okay. And they come in and if you're going to spend several hundred thousand dollars in the year and you do it in Cook County where you're paying 0.1% more, that's a ton of money. That's thousands of dollars you're losing. You know what that means? It means these contractors who have to bring, haul things in by truck anyway are more than willing to spend the half an hour in, to tow the materials when they do a project if it means going to a different county. Home Depot knew this. And they knew they would lose customers because of the increasing tax cost. And so they left. They went to a different county where the costs were lower. And apparently it worked. People, you got, you got to consider this. This meant that Cook County was now losing tax revenue. When these blue states think they're going to raise the, 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 the tax rate to make more money, it is not always the case because you could reduce uh, trade volume. Okay, so think about it this way. If there's $1 and every time someone trades it, a government gets a percentage, the, the government gets a percentage, you could have a really low tax rate, but the trade goes back and forth a hundred times and they extract more money that way. When they, when they jack up the tax rate, people trade less because they can't afford things or they don't want to pay a high tax rate. And then your volume goes down. Now I'll make another point. Yes, high taxes do contribute to people leaving because listen, man, Right now, if, you, if you're in New York City, what are you doing in New York City? Why do you need to be in New York City? What job are you doing? You're not manufacturing something. You're probably working at an investment firm or a legal firm, or you're writing blogs about Brad Pitt's junk for some listicle website. Yeah, you can do that all by email. So now the opportunity for remote jobs is expanding. The digital economy allows people to just do a lot of these jobs. I mean, there are people who hire assistants in India, okay? So now you can work from anywhere. So now there's an incentive to leave. You're thinking to yourself, why am I paying 13% in New York City when I can move to New Jersey and pay less and work remotely for my company? And in some, some circumstances, you can. I lived in New York City for a long time. I eventually moved to the Jersey side because I worked for myself and there was no point in paying taxes for New York City and paying ridiculous rent. New Jersey was cheaper. I never really went to the city anyway. So I eventually moved to South Jersey where I'm basically in the Philly area now. But that was it for me. I'm one of these people who left New York thinking it costs too much. Why bother? I don't need to be in New York to do this job. So I left. Now here's what ends up happening. The infrastructure of New York, the infrastructure of Los Angeles and these other places. Granted, Los Angeles is still seeing a slight net gain, even though they're losing a lot of residents. They're gaining more because of, I think, immigration and, 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 and domestic migration. But they are seeing a massive net migration. out. Anyway, the point is states like Illinois, states like Michigan, New York, they lose residents. But the infrastructure costs the same. If it costs a million dollars to run your city's water system, then the tax burden of that million dollars is spread out among all residents. As more people not only have the ability to leave, but are driven out by these high taxes, then the tax burden for that infrastructure is spread out among all residents. To put it simply, a million people funding a million dollar system each pay a dollar per year. 500,000 people supporting a million dollar system are going to pay $2 per year. So the more people leave, the more your costs go up for these utilities. The high taxes are not helping. But again, it's also the digital economy. But now let's talk about the real issue. Failed progressive laws. I know, bring it on left, calling me biased and all that stuff. But I tell you this is a reason why I like Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang has pointed out 
increasing the minimum wage will not solve these problems. Bravo, good sir. Now, I'm not convinced that the freedom dividend he's proposing is going to solve any of these problems either, but he made a good point about the, about the minimum wage. It doesn't change the fact that housewives, for instance, don't have access to the economy unless they're married. It doesn't change the fact that there are some people who lose their access to resources through no fault of their own. It's particularly complicated. And again, I don't think giving everyone $1,000 solves the problem because that brings me to the first failed progressive law, New York City's $15 minimum wage increase. Let's talk about it. There are some good aspects to a minimum wage increase I agree with, but there's a lot of things wrong with it. The second failed policy uh, issue I want to talk about, which is causing an exodus from these states, is California Assembly Bill 5, which just shut down the gig economy. First, if you give, if you give everyone at the lowest skill level of job, you know, production or service, a wage increase, everything above that has to go up. Everything has to go up. So let's say it costs $5 of materials to make a widget. It's just an arbitrary object and you're paying $10 an hour, and they can produce one widget per hour. That means your cost for the widget is $5 for materials, $10 in labor. Every hour you're spending $15. Let's say you then increase that person's wage by $5. Guess what? Now the widget costs $20. So you have to increase the cost of the widget. Everybody above that tier who requires that service or production will have to increase their costs accordingly because the increase in cost in the the materials increasing the the amount of money people get paid doesn't change the value of their labor. That's just the way it works. Okay. So what ends up happening? A bunch. So a new law rolling into effect January 1st is going to make it so that all workers in New York City get a $15 minimum wage. What was that? I thought Andrew Cuomo was blaming Donald Trump, but we lowered taxes. So what if you lowered taxes? If you just increased the cost of all labor for all businesses by 50%, now, for most people, they're paying more than $10 an hour. So the cost increase is probably only 30 or <laughs> so percent. But I tell you this, man, businesses have already shut down. First, let me praise minimum wages and why it could work in New York. The cost of many goods are imported from other areas of the country. Those goods don't change because the minimum wage in those areas doesn't go up. Okay, it only affects the residents of New York increasing their access and, you know, it lowers the amount of wealth the higher, higher uh, uh, bracket will get and increases the amount of wealth the lower bracket will get. But the cost of living in New York is mostly, mostly dependent upon the labor in New York City. Bus drivers, baristas, you know, supermarket stockers, all that stuff. Facers, they call them. We got to pull the food to the front. I used to do that when I was six, 16. So for the most part, this will not work. Guess what happens? As businesses close and taxes remain high, people will leave. This is a failed policy. Cuomo can brag about lowering taxes all he wants, but if you just jacked up the cost of basically everything in the city, and well, I believe the state, by 20 to 30 percent, people are going to be like, the cost of living just shot way up. Sorry, it's not going to solve the problems you have. It is an archaic solution. This is, what, this is my problem with the modern progressives, okay? My policies are lean left. I like Andrew Yang, but guess what? Minimum wages are an old solution to old problems. There's no guarantee they will work when we have a digital economy allowing people to leave. Okay, you don't get it. We are in a different era. Okay, you want to raise taxes? People can transfer their money to Bitcoin and send it overseas in two seconds. They can easily transfer things to foreign countries. It didn't used to be that way. Raising taxes, people talk about how we used to have a 90% income tax bracket. Yes, it made sense when it was very difficult to move money. Now you can snap your fingers and send your money to China. Now that it's so easy, taxes are harder to to, to implement because people can now compete with all these other countries. The point is, the digital economy, new technology requires new solutions. And progressives keep saying, I want to be the party of the new deal, like, you know, FDR or whatever. It's like, dude, that was 100 years ago. We can't just solve these problems by looking at the past and saying, that's what they did then. We'll do it now. No, we have different problems today. Okay. So while I certainly think this can work in some capacities and uh, to to a certain extent, it'll be great for external, you know, for for imports from other countries, it's going to massively drive up the cost of living in New York City. And let me just bring it on home again. I like Andrew Yang for being a forward thinker, but I don't think he's 100% correct. 
California Assembly Bill 5. You know what this does? It basically shut down the gig economy. Uber drivers and freelance riders, among other people, are being shut down. And this is a progressive law. It was backed by the unions. And even though you have all of these riders, Uber drivers freaking out, saying you are cutting off our access to resources, they don't care. So now we have created a new technology. Okay, you can write from anywhere. You can work from anywhere. You can use Uber and be your own boss. So what does California do? Shut it down. What a, look, look, man, they complain about Trump implementing, you know, uh, old solutions to new problems. They're literally doing the same thing. This, in my opinion, is going to force basically every single writer out of California. I don't know what you're going to do. Okay, if you're a writer in California, these websites are already saying they're not going to hire you. If you're an Uber driver, you're already in trouble. And it's because of unions and progressives and Democrats, not because of the Republicans. OK, I don't I'm not saying Republican policy would work any better. I'm saying we're looking at these states that are seeing massive exodus. The first factor is likely the ability to work remotely. The next is failed policies, high taxes combined with an inability to work. And what do you think you get? So, again, California's got a lot of good things going for it. A lot of rich people live there. They're still seeing slow growth, but some of the slowest, but they are seeing some of the highest net domestic migration. Let me tell you why, man. You pass a law telling people they can't work. What are they supposed to do? So I mentioned this before. There's a website called Patch. They do hyper local news for different areas. They've already said they're not going to hire people in California. This not only means freelance writers in California are out of work. It also means California will not be getting local news. They are quite literally implementing policies that are hurting themselves. Not to mention California's got a massive homeless crisis already. So now they pass a law making it harder to do a job. What do you think is going to happen to these people who are no longer allowed to work? Vox.com, VOX laid off hundreds of people in California because of this. All of these freelance writers, they write, you know, this is, this is, this is what I'm talking about with failed policy. You look at these blue states. They are on a track and they can't course correct. This is what the left tends to do. And it's why people don't even call me centrist anymore. Well, they still kind of call me centrist. But I'll tell you this. I've shown you the graph where the Republicans go, go up and the Democrats go far left. I'm in the cent. I'm actually where Obama was. I'm not even, you know, 20, 10 years ago, I wasn't even a centrist. I was a liberal. Now, because the gap is so wide and I'm still kind of where Obama was, I'm not even considered center anymore because the left has gone so far to the left. The problem is, when it comes to government programs, do they work? The answer is yes, they do. Okay. And I will stand by that. However, at what, at what point does the left stop and think and purge these programs when they've become cumbersome or fail? In the private sector, businesses work. And then sometimes after 10 years, a business goes under because it's become obsolete. So the private sector works. Does that mean that private business does not work because they failed 10 years later? No, the private business worked perfectly serving, providing a service. Times changed. The business goes under. They could have adapted. Well, it didn't. Blockbuster was huge. So you, I look at this. I look at government programs the same way. Government programs do work. They can provide relief and help people. And I'm a, I'm a strong supporter of many of them. The problem is they don't fail. The government just doubles down and keeps going. So the minimum wage worked for, for a variety of reasons. It's 100 years later. Things are changing. And what do they do? Just keep on keeping on. Don't stop. Don't reflect. Keep going. That's the problem of government. And the left tends to be a proponent of these laws that aren't necessarily helping. But I'll tell you what, man, you reap what you sow. Because in California, what happens? They passed this law because the unions wanted it. And now all of these workers are going to be without work. And California is going to see itself facing a much bigger homeless crisis. All of these things are tied together. I'll end with this. Why are people leaving California? It's gross, man. San Francisco's got human waste all over the streets. What do you expect? Okay. So I'll tell you what, as much as the left doesn't want to hear it, yes, high taxes and failed policy are hurting your political power. But that's the political marketplace, man. As people flee these blue states into red areas, that's not going to change the makeup for the most part. The, the Republicans will still dominate heavy Republican areas, and these, these bigger cities will lose congressional seats. That's what it seems like may, may actually happen. I think the internet is playing the biggest role. It's providing relief. But if the left doesn't learn to course correct and figure out when they've gone too far, eventually they will just lose their power and then the system will correct itself naturally. Of course, it might cause a major swing to Republicans, which I'm sure many of the cultural leftists don't want to hear. But hey, money talks, BS walks, okay? If you're going to increase the cost of basically everything and jack up the cost of living in New York City, people are going to leave, okay? 
If you're going to if you're going to pass laws saying you can't work in California if you're in the gig economy, people going to leave and then you will have less votes. Welcome to the political marketplace. Anyway, there you go. Stick around. Next segment will be coming up at youtube.com slash Timcast. That is my main channel. There's going to be some restructuring going on. I am preparing a new show. This channel is going to have an entirely new hour and a half of content every day. I am doubling my workload. I'm crazy. We'll see how it works. But uh, stick around. Next segment's coming up at youtube.com slash Timcast. Um, well, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit. I might be moving every segment from this channel to the main channel. Then I'm planning to do a live show with, with um, uh, user commentary, like you, you can comment, because I haven't been doing live streams because of the way things are structured. It's going to be a new show. It's going to be, um, for the most part, most part, no hard politics. It's going to be more cultural politics, things like this, right? I'm not going to talk about what, you know, Trump is doing or Bernie says. It's going to literally be like policy, but it's going to be a lot of like cultural political issues. So I'll talk about movies. It's, it, the goal is to make two shows, a, an overtly political and then a more cultural and I want to have a lot of guests on this channel. So this one will become more of like a generalist podcast, with political issues, science, and probably like cool, just cool, interesting, weird stuff that I think, you know, I don't get to talk about too much. Like I do, I do the UFO videos here sometimes, and I know they don't do that well, but I love doing it anyway. So, so, so stay tuned for that. The work on my uh, home studio is being done as we speak, and we are going to be at like well, so, so, so the whole basement is finished as of like next couple hours, but then we got to, we got to set up the, the backdrops and cameras and technical equipment and things like that. So it's coming. I'm excited, but uh, yeah, I'll be doing a live show and it's going to be semi-produced. So I'll have a, I'll have a lineup of stories that are relevant, but the main political big breaking news will be my main channel. And this channel will be more stuff like analysis on minimum wage and like my personal opinions and then like movies, reviews, and just like cool, interesting stuff space, interdimensional travel, religion, just kind of like general. And there's going to be a goal to have new guests as many times as possible. So I'll be like booking guests, bringing out researchers and scientists. One thing I really want to do is there's only like a handful of intellectual dark web people. And I want to find more academics, you know, who are lesser known and talk about some of their research. So yeah, I'll leave it there. Stick around. Uh, Go to to youtube.com slash Timcast and I will see you at 4 p.m.